Okay, we're back. And the question was, um, uh, was what was your question? <laughs> It, well, that was that was the problem is that it was having difficulty posing the question. It's just the 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 practical application of this. I'm understanding. It, yeah. How does yeah? How do you okay? How do you explain it in practical application? Okay, all of these two categories are doing is preparing the mind, body, spirit to process the thought. Okay, the actual experiencing of the thought takes place in the next three categories. So what we are doing is we are attracting the thought, the, the first thought that we attract. In that first thought, we are going to attract it with our biggest ego, our biggest perception of separation. We are going to pull the body and the spirit, the spirit is going to be ignored by our ego. It is going to accept even functioning but constant movement from the body, which doesn't significantly contradict the ego other than adding that constant motion. Okay? So, <coughs> Then this is sent up here, and unconsciousness gets to us, and so we remain unconsciousness, unconscious with a huge ego and perspective of constant movement. We bypass this, we bypass all of this for now, and we send this up to be experienced in the catalyst experience and significator categories. Okay? <coughs> So we've been doing this for a few lifetimes, and we've built up uh, some consciousness, which means that uh, in this particular category, the, the, the movement and the uh, awareness have begun to move a little bit. You've got a, an ounce of awareness happening here. You're getting near, say you're getting near the 200 level on, on Hawkins scale. So you track the next thought, it comes up, it's not all movement, it's not all ego, your ego has been shrunk a little bit. You send this over here, and again, movement and the chaos is, is resolved a little bit because the antithesis of the movement and chaos is stillness. So you got a little stillness coming, it's not, not quite as chaotic. Okay. So, say you're over 200, you come over here, not much happens here because this is innocence, and what is happening to the innocence is it is being decreased because you have been processing stuff before, and it's gone from the potentiator of the spirit and giving you information. So, relatively speaking, and this is the beginnings of this transition, Innocence is beginning to be transformed and collect light. Okay? Because of this. So, what is happening from this is your confidence is incrementally beginning to increase. You're beginning to get to the point where you either experience courage or you're about to experience courage because the strength of your will is increasing because you've got light. And you know, you know, if you go into a dark cave and you have no information about what's in the dark cave, it may be scary as hell and fearful as hell. But you're in there, your eyes start to adjust a little bit, you're able to see slightly, you begin to get confidence that you can see maybe a foot or two in front of you, and so your innocence, your ignorance begins to subside. So your confidence goes up. Okay, but what you just said earlier is that at these levels, it's not involving experience. But what you're talking about right now, going into a cave, is an experience. Well, I'm relating. Well, all of this we're learning from from experience. Every thought is an experience. There's, there's no there's no experience without the processing of a thought. I think she's the distinction was between experiencing and direct experiencing. 
Because you made the... Yeah, but I, you know, I, 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 I... Well, I'm having difficulty defining exactly where we are, and it's not an exact level. If you're at this level, then this is what you will experience. What is happening is this is awakening. So we are getting night lights. I'm, just, I'm having a lot of trouble grasping. Okay. That, that this... Okay, Init we we move beyond the initial thoughts. We're we're beginning to move out of low consciousness. Low consciousness is going to be the cycle of pain and suffering. We're just going to experience the uh, the attraction of the thought, the chaos. We're not going to get anything from over here from experiential. We're going to stay in this lifetime after lifetime and stay on consciousness. We're going to keep going to war. We're going to keep battling. We're going to have a miserable life. We go and we work all day long, go home and go to sleep. And that's it. That's our entire life. Okay. Um, okay. It, it's making more sense now. Okay. That's, that's low consciousness. We're getting nothing from spirit over there. Okay. Even though we go to church every week and we say we're, you know, doing holy stuff, but this is not awakened. We're, we're not getting any experiences out of the spirit whatsoever. Okay. It's all symbolic. We're dealing with words in cursory tactile experiences. Not not the the heartfelt okay. spirit experience. Okay, I was not that that was my problem. I thought you meant it was just all thought. Well we got, you know, semantic difficulty experiences. Right, right. Multifaceted. Okay. Okay? Okay. So we're getting up uh, around two hundred on the consciousness scale and we're beginning we're awakening our spirit category. So we get a thought in here, the thought comes in, it goes to the to the body for input, polling. The body responds, it also goes over here to the spirit. The spirit responds, our ego has begun to shrunk a little bit and we've come to realize that the body is not what we want, that's what we don't like. So we've a few times in the past recognized the spirit and that felt pretty good. You know, I kind of like the spirit input. So I'm going to be aware of it, but we're still caught in our biases and prejudices and social judgments and that kind of stuff. So we're still going to choose the body over the spirit unless we think about it. And by thinking about it, I mean let our awareness kind of step up there. Use the strength of our will to allow our awareness to guide us as opposed to the chaos or the biases and prejudices of social pressure. So as we more and more discover our independence, our divinity, the more we discover our divinity, the more we're going to pay attention over here to the spirit. And the more we're going to still the chaos, the more we're going to allow these two to transform. So the movement slows down, the stillness begins to take precedent. We awaken the potentiator of the body. So we are using wisdom and stillness. The more still we become, the more strong or more wise we become, more wisdom emerges. Well, the more wisdom, inherent characteristic of the Creator, the more we're going to pay attention to the spirit. The less control unconsciousness is going to have. So we're allowing awareness and the potentiator of the mind to emerge. So we've established a resonance here and here with just awareness. That's what we're learning in this level of consciousness. We're reducing the I perspective. It's not all about me. It's in, and we're allowing our ego to subside. We're experiencing something else other than um, uh, the, the service to self perspective, low consciousness perspective. The more we do that, the more it resonates with us, the more our wisdom resonates, the more this activates this wisdom over here, and we start beginning to get Spiritual experiences. It feels good to us to do something for someone else and expect nothing in return. 
So incrementally, we begin to have direct experiences of the Creator, which is represented in the inherent characteristics. Awareness, wisdom, love, and so forth. We move beyond, certainly. We still have to deal with those, uh, those other kind of experiences where we make a living or we're learning about biology or whatever. So the ratio of our day, you know, may be only 2% of the spirit experience over here, but it's a lot more than nothing. And as we continue to surrender the physical, we become less concerned about survival, about making a living, about making it till next week, and more concerned about devoting our time and attention to the spirit. So our consciousness is rising. What determines how quickly our consciousness rises is the strength of our will at this point. Up until here, 350, this is all accomplished by the strength of our will in activating these, these transitions, transformations that we're talking about. When we get to 350, we begin to activate the, the higher uh, levels of, of the archetypical mind, the transformation in the great way. Just begin. And it's like, you know, a shadow in the, in the, uh, the closet that we feel that it's there. Okay, does that help? Yes. Okay, does it help enough? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a question. Okay. So when you're when you're you know how you talked about um, say you were in a different art, um, say you're in a different you're under the same archetype but you're in a different experience where there is no veil and you can actually watch mm -hmm. um, the process. Do they watch the process similar to the way that you're verbally walking through it? I, I suspect. I mean, I have no recollection of that, but I suspect that that's what it would be like. I know. I know that. I know that they're aware of it. I know that they can. They can. They're aware that this is in time space. I know that they cannot go to, to time space. That's a fourth fourth density experience. So you know how how aware they are of it. I I can't. Okay, they're, watch, they're basically watching the gathering of the light of the transition. Yeah, essentially. Transformation. <coughs> yeah. And when Ra refers to us as a mind-body-spirit complex, the reason it's a complex is because we can't see this. Because we are under the veil. That's right. So it, that again adds additional layer of complexity to it. We just complex little cute creatures down here on there. Okay? So, how else can I... I don't know. Don't know? <laughs> what, where, where are you, where are you I don't faltering? Even, I don't even know how... I, I don't oh, even know how to answer that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And so far we've been talking about, I mean, that's the experience in low consciousness is that so many of these aren't activated or even we're not aware. We can't recognize the input. But you wanted to talk about what it looks like preparing a thought for someone in higher consciousness, right? Yeah, we can. The, again, by lower consciousness, I'm really talking about 200 and below. And there's transformational stage between 200 and 350. Where, this, where the strength of our will is, again, our, our, our sole motivator. It's our engine that's driving us forward. But it's being driven forward by the carrot as opposed to the stick. While we remain below 200, it's the stick that's driving us forward. It hurts less to do this than it does to do that. And so I'm going to do this. 
Once we cross over 200, then we get some experience, we get some uh, uh, inkling of not having the stick, of having the carrot. We get a little bit of feeling every once in a while of what it is like. And so we still have the stick, but that becomes kind of a double motivator because we know it hurts here and it feels good here because I've felt a little of it, so I'm going to go to the carrot. Okay? So that accelerates our change and the transition from below 200 to above 200 has taken um, 70... Well, if, if we have a 75,000 75, year experience on Earth, it's taken 74,590 some odd years to get to 200. We just got to 200 in the, the 1990s. Is that pretty standard for any, any experience that's failed? No. No. No, a, a, a typical experience, the, seven, the experience of third density is divided into three equal parts. Right. In the first part, what is a normal, and there's not a normal, but what, what is anticipated is a certain number will graduate from the first third, the bulk of the population will graduate the middle, and then the third is just to clean up those that needed additional time. Where is this time the bulk is in the third? Well, the first we had no graduates, the second, the middle part, we had 150 graduates, and whatever bulk there is, which is anticipated to be roughly 18% uh, going service to others, is going to happen in the third phase, which is still pretty paltry when you consider how many people there are. How many people there are. Yeah. But there's no judgment as to how we are doing or not doing because it's all just experience. It's just a matter of how many are still caught in the throes of chaos and confusion and experiencing pain and suffering as the course of their day. But as far as judgment of success of the experience, it's been very successful because it's generated tremendous amounts of experience. But that's why the wanderers were sent because they they didn't want to just stop the experience. They wanted them. They need them that's to right. graduate. They needed help. They needed help. The reason they needed help because unconsciousness was so strong that it allowed the service to self to step in and, and provide undue influence. And instead of of um, uh, tainting the experience by essentially doing battle with the service to self, they simply brought in, wanders uh, brought in wanders in to kick the light up, kick the consciousness level up. Well, and it was successful too because, you know, because of that little bit of a hiccup where they had to rebalance, you know, I mean, that raw experience, what raw experience, they had to bring in, you know, the time lateral and everything else. I mean, it's still a significant success in the sense that they recognize that they can rebalance even when it goes out of balance. It, it, the, the considerations of balancing go way beyond our little little square here on earth or right. circle here on earth or whatever it is. Yeah, but you know, uh, what we're primarily concerned with is me on earth and how do I get out of here? So. <laughs> What's interesting is, I mean, couldn't they just stop it and everybody just merges? Then it's lost. What do you mean it's lost? Well, it, it's, a, it's a flow. It's continuous. You can't just stop it. They can't come in and just stop it and say, Everybody well, it, it's, it's stopped every time we have a thought. Yeah, but I mean, they can't just everybody go home because it's too hard. It's not working out. Well, you can, and there are experiences that they've done that, but it's not to that point yet. Well, that's um, like no child left behind, and that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> No, what I'm saying is, is that it's interesting that they don't just say, well, it's not working, and I wanted to know, have they done that? Because but it is working. That point. It's working wonderfully well. Well, now, but you know, you just say that this is, this has been a significantly difficult time, and there's so many people still stuck in unconsciousness. Which is not a measure of the, the success of the project. The success of the project is measured 
in opportunities for the Creator to know itself by experiencing itself. So it has been tremendously productive from that standpoint. The difficulty as far as we are concerned is that the... Um, it is difficult. Yeah, it's just I, I wanted to know if they ever have gone, you know what, we need to stop this, and they completely, everybody merges back. Well, they're, yes, they're stopping and starting to, to many of them, but it's more because they're not productive. Because they're not providing experience. They're not providing experience okay. than the difficulty of it. Okay. Our experience is extremely difficult. But it's very productive. But it's very productive. Indeed. And we are just the creator, so it's not that nothing is being done to us. Mm -hmm. We are just participating in a difficult experience, and it's difficult because we've made it difficult. <laughs> so then we can learn more. That's right. Yeah. Hi, David. Hi. Well, and then it also provides opportunities for the wanderers coming in, coming in as well. So Multi-dimensional multi experience yeah. opportunities. So yeah. they'll only stop experiments when they're not productive. That's really the only reason to stop it. Okay. Well, most experiences are created um, with incremental changes, just to see what the variances are in, and how it impacts Adjusted, the yeah, experiences. Yeah. Tinker with it. Mm -hmm. Throw a few hand grenades over here and see if everybody moves to the other side. <laughs> and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, did you think of anything else that I... No. I don't even know how to ask. I don't even know what to ask. Okay. I mean, part of me gets it, but and I don't, and I haven't decided if it's because it's so basic that I'm have. I, I don't know. I, don't, I, I really don't know. Can you just talk real quick? Just do one kind of walk through of the flow again. So the thought goes up through the matrix of the... Okay, well it's important to qualify, and you're thinking about how this flow works. Mm -hmm. It's important to qualify where the consciousness level is when the thought comes in. Okay, so we've already done the low... Well, let's do low consciousness and then move to um, higher consciousness. So for the lower consciousness, it moves... Okay. So, uh, uh, the, the first thought that we have the absolute, we begin third density, we on the starting line, they throw the switch and we start processing the first thought. The thought goes into the matrix of the mind, we attract it to the matrix of the mind, the matrix of the mind is totally in movement, it is a huge ego, a huge perspective of separation from the creator. It gets the thought, it sends the thought over to the matrix of the body, the matrix of the body, is even functioning, but in total chaos. In other words, it's like a gyroscope that is very stable on that first thought, but it's in constant motion. It also sends it to the spirit. Whatever the spirit sends back, it doesn't recognize. It's not able to recognize the spirit. So it's just the, the matrix of the mind, uh, of the mind and the matrix of the body that are preparing this thought, sending the thought up to the potentiator of the mind. Oh, sorry, sorry, you lost, hold on one second. So matrix of the body, I mean matrix of the mind goes to matrix of the body. It's not through the body that it goes to the spirit, it's at the same time it's going to the spirit. It's pulling It's going the through time. the body. It's because, going, through, it's going the body. through the body. But it's not recognizing it. Yeah. All right, well, that's, I and that, you know, that, that's, a, that's a perceptual thing because and if you remember we talked about that's why we say the mind, body, and spirit uh -huh. rather than, you know, I, when first I started trying to figure this out, I thought, well, the mind's here and it's sending out a polling. I'll put the spirit over here so it sends it out equally to the mind and the body, and that's not the way it works. Okay. Why does it have to go to the body? Low consciousness. And, and it has and to access the spirit through the body? Uh-huh. Hmm. That's the way it works. Fine. Because this is higher, this is this is resonant. This was created by this, and the way it works is we are in a physical existence. We're in a physical experience. Okay. All right. So it goes to the matrix of the body, and then it goes through the matrix of the body to the matrix of the spirit. It pulls it. It doesn't get. A, it doesn't recognize it, and then it goes. 
the thought then comes goes back or what? Matrix of the body. I goes, mean, to the mind. Goes back to the matrix of the mind. And we send it. It's in chaos. That thought is interpreted in chaos here. Yeah. Goes up to the matrix of and the And that's after mind, having flown flowed through to the there. Yeah. It's gone over here. Yeah. It's come back. And it comes to here. And then it goes over here. It's and it comes back. And goes up. All right. So it's always coming back to the. To the mind. The mind is the decider. Okay. So hold on a second. Okay. So it goes from the. Matrix of the mind to the perfect. To the matrix of the body. Yeah, I'm talking about when it comes back and it's not recognized the spirit, and it goes back to the matrix of the mind, then it goes to the potentiator of the mind. Okay, and then so at the point that it's with the potentiator of the mind, say what you would normally say. Okay, at low consciousness, unconsciousness is still in control. And so it sends it over here and doesn't even get to the potentiator of the body. So then it moves to the potentiator. It's just a, the, the uh, potentiator of mind that says, I'm not sending it out. I'm just keeping it here. I don't need any input. I'm unconsciousness. I'm uh, ignorant. So it doesn't send it to the potentiator of the body because it's still in low consciousness. Mm -hmm. It tries, but it doesn't. It would, you know, it would like, the, the thought would like to go over there, but. That Lucifer doesn't let it go. But it's there. still in too much darkness. Okay. Too much darkness, yeah. All right. Okay. So and then it sends it up <coughs> to the catalyst for processing as an experience. So okay. while we are below 200, what is going to be considered as an experience, what is, what is actually experienced, is in total chaos. All right, so let's go through the same exercise but with higher consciousness. Okay. All right. The body potentiator or the potentiator of the body cannot read it at all. It just won't send it there because it's still too much in because um, it's unconscious. If you if you look what look at what here in the potentiator of the body, you have wisdom and you have stillness. And while you're in that low level of consciousness, you're not able to contribute any wisdom. So it's really not even pulling it. It's basically just not even getting there. Essentially, yeah, it's not. All right, so in, then in higher consciousness. Well, higher consciousness, let's take it above 200. We get up here and say you're at 310, 350 range, okay? okay? You're still working on the strength of your will in order to motivate this forward. But you've begun to activate awareness here, here, and here. So you've got a lot of awareness just in the preparation of this. So, unconsciousness is still strong, but it's not dominating. So you begin to get some input from the potentiator of the body, which is wisdom. And to some small degree, more stillness. So, this is coming up, and you are also beginning to get input from here and here. So this is not contributing a lot. This is receiving. This is receiving more from here. When you get up into the 310, if you look, this 310 is willingness. 350 is acceptance. So you're beginning to get, to get experience from here. Inherent characteristic of the creator. You're beginning to get some input from here. You're getting with your awareness here, you're getting awareness here, and you're getting awareness and some wisdom here. You remember when when you activate awareness, all the other inherent characteristics are there, just not as prominent. So this light information that you're getting has characteristics of awareness, wisdom, love, unity stillness. Okay, so can you follow the same flow? Thank you. Sure. And, and say at 350, the thought comes in here again. It goes to here. But it also goes to here. And you've got input from previous thoughts. Okay, this is no longer absolute innocence. You've got some input from, from this level. So it comes back to here. You've got some stilling, and you've got some awareness, 
So this is still, you know, relatively speaking in chaos, but a much, much calmer, much less chaos than it was below 200. Okay, but don't move to, to okay, so it goes, yet. Okay, so it goes from this, the matrix of the spirit back over to the matrix of the mind. Matrix of the mind is always the decider, or, or the mind category is always the decider. Whether you're at the beginning stages or the final stages of the experience. Okay, now I have a question. When it goes from the matrix of the mind and goes into the matrix of the body before it makes it to the matrix of the spirit, does it have to go back through the body? No. Okay. And it's, it's not like there's something physical here that it has to go through. <laughs> I get that. I'm just. Okay. Uh, we just want the linear uh, version of this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that we can quasi. Doesn't have to go in and open the door, walk through, <laughs> <laughs> go out the back door. I get that. <laughs> like so like I, she said, I need the linear. Just take us through the linear. So, <laughs> so we're, we, we, we've made it all the way, actually been able to manage to get to this matrix of the spirit. Um, and, and back to the matrix And now of the we're mind. going back to the matrix of the mind. And the matrix goes, of the mind is what sends it upstream to the uh, potentiator of the mind. Yeah. All right, and then in the potentiator of the mind under this particular flow. Go ahead. Now remember, this is, this is processing a thought within the mind, body, spirit. Okay? So the I perspective over here is still in effect but to a much less degree, the ego is reduced, the chaos is reduced, unconsciousness is reduced, but still strong. But it's reduced enough that you can get it over here and experience at least the wisdom from this. The wisdom of the body contributes their thought. It also goes over here for direct experience of the inherent characteristics, and the spirit contributes to the potentiator of the mind at the 350 level. So from the potentiator of the spirit, it goes back to the potentiator of the mind. Mm -hmm. And you're getting, once you activate the, the, uh, the spirit category, then you're getting input from both additional awareness and wisdom. So you've got wisdom here, you've got wisdom there, coming back to more awareness here. You so only it? once you get to 300 is it going to actually pay attention to all of them in these two levels? Really about 350. Mm -hmm. Because 350, 350, you're getting into acceptance mm -hmm. and transcendence. And this is by no means absolute. I mean, you're still, you still have a very strong ego. You still have an eye perspective. You're still under unconsciousness. But relatively speaking, you're way down the line because you're at least allowing these others to peek in. And then the potentiator of the spirit goes back to the potentiator of the mind. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then it, then when we start our next session, it's when we're going, then we go up to the next level. To the catalyst. And then, this is again preparing the mind, body, spirit, preparing the thought for delivery for an experience. The experience itself doesn't start until we get to the catalyst. The catalyst, the experience, and the significator categories of what actually processes the thought and exacts the experience. So is the preparation determining the emotion that's applied to the thought nope. when it enters? No. Nope. Or that's what's happening through the experience? It's just prepping that, as you get that thought. This is just preparing the mind, body, spirit for, that, for the thought. For a particular thought or any Jeez. thought? Every thought. Every, well... It's preparation before the experience and the catalyst. Understand that yeah. the mind, body, spirit has been modified. 
So every thought goes through a completely, or not completely, but a, a changed mind, body, spirit. Yes, so every thought is being prepped by the mind, body, spirit. But, but it's being... actually what is, what is happening, the mind, body, spirit is being prepped for the thought. The thought is attracted and we're processing a thought, but it's actually the mind, body, spirit that is being changed. Right. The thought, you can't change the consciousness level on the thought. Right. Right. So this is actually the awareness. Where did awareness go? This is the awareness of the mind, body, spirit, not the thought. This is transforming the mind, body, spirit. Well, no, I, yeah, I completely understand that. What I'm okay. saying though is, it's 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 not the mind, body, spirit isn't prepping. Depending, it's not. It's it's readjusting for the next thought. Essentially. Yes. yes. Okay. That that's. What I want to know. And it's not like digesting the thought. <laughs> it's readjusting <coughs> for the next thought. Yes. Okay. And this, remember, doesn't change. We're talking about this as if this is being awakened and changing. Which is actually the only thing that is changing is the mind, body, spirit. So this is this is here, hell or high water. Okay? But until the mind, body, spirit is kind of like when you go into Disney World and they've got the little height measurement thing that, you know, you can't ride this ride if you're not this tall. Well, these, this is sitting here, screened by unconsciousness. This is here, the ride is here, but you're not tall enough to ride this ride. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, this is, I mean, this is helpful when we can, and I, don't, I know this is not a good terminology to use, but when you dumb it down, and you simply kind of walk through, well, that's helpful. Making it linear was helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. And, and when we come together again and we do that first portion of the catalyst section, then we can walk through it again and wa you know, watch mm -hmm. the flow, and that will be helpful. Okay. So we good? Any questions? If there if there are, I don't know what they are yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, why don't we call it a day? Thank you, Dean. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.